Right. Uh, what's it like being nominated for a Canadian Screen Awards? What does that mean to you to be a Canadian creator? Uh, let's start with Sarah. It's it's amazing. I spent, I don't know, uh, around four years uh, getting my film made from the, the initial idea to uh, having it screened at the Canadian Film Fest last year. And uh, yeah, it just came out of this little idea that my friend Adam Garner jones and I had. We wanted to make a low-budget feature and yeah, to be nominated for Best Original Screenplay feels really empowering. Like we came up with an idea that's acknowledged as you know something really good and it, yeah. it's yeah it feels great did you have that in your mind like this is gonna get nominated this is <laughs> gonna be the first movie on the moon uh, yes <laughs> first movie on the moon yeah um no yeah you just you have no idea how the film is going to be received and you we just tried to stay true to the the idea that we set out to make and we didn't we hoped that people would um connect with it and and they really did so it's mm -hmm. been super exciting yeah yeah it's fantastic i watched the other day oh, and it's you. uh great 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 is great 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 uh you. that's your review that's what's going to come out <laughs> thanks uh, what about you <laughs> joyce what, what's it like for you being nominated because you uh you have some great directing skills in your in your back pocket oh thank you um yeah it's it's amazing this is an amazing thing to be nominated and to be recognized by the community in Toronto, especially since the movie is about this place called Wexford Plaza, which is in the, the GTA area. And, um, and also, just all the glamour and the glitz of it. Oh, is, so much glamour, It's huh? fun. Yeah. I mean, she's, you don't see her um, on radio, but she's wearing a tiara. <laughs> it's extraordinary. Uh, what about you, Raki? Raki? Oh, come on, Raki. Naomi. It's sneakers. You should be able to pronounce Raki. <laughs> It's Rocky. It's Rocky. Oh, I was yeah, right! right. <laughs> Goodness. Um, watch my video. <laughs> Talk about my no, name. I did. <laughs> and there's that video of you going to order food. And then I was like, yeah. Reiki, Reiki, Reiki. Rocky. Rocky. Here we go. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Super empowering. Exactly what Sarah said. I uh, made these videos before CBC came on board. I made five of them just with like filmmakers and friends that I wanted to work with from the money that I got while serving, like my tip, tip out money. <laughs> and um, yes, I did do craft for a lot of it. Yeah, that's what you do. And then when CBC came on board, it became this really exciting thing. And then uh, I was like, okay, these, these things are coming up. Maybe I'll put some money in a, you know, see if, see if anything happens. And when I got the nomination, it was like, you had to be really quiet in that room. <laughs> Did anyone know yeah, you had to be, had to be cool, really, for sure. really cool? And I, I was at home. not cool at all. I screamed when yours came up. Oh, I was like, woo -woo! And someone looked around, they were like, who are you? Like, She's my friend. I know her struggle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Because right. it's yeah. wrong to cheer for strangers, right? Yeah. I don't know her, but woo -hoo! Yeah. No, you'll have to leave. Uh, and also, you created this yourself. And I'll tell you something that it does honor the fact that if your material is good it doesn't matter if you shoot on a film on a phone like your the quality of your uh, yeah. web series looks really great but the jokes are fantastic yeah thank you yeah, yeah. I, I i worked on it for a while it was an idea that was in my head and i just worked through it and and i'm really pleased with how things turned out yeah couldn't have hoped for anything better what about you friday What's your world like? You've been through uh, sensitive skin, and you've had a long uh, career of design work. What's it like being nominated this year for Anne with an E? Um, well, first of all, I have to say how in awe of these women right? I am. Right? Like they're, they're you know taking something and it's their idea, and they're blooming it, uh, uh, you know, making it come to fruition. Whereas I'm someone who works for years in conjunction with other people. They hire me. I go from show to show, and. And hopefully I pick the projects that are, and I do, try to get some projects that are interesting to me, interesting to other people, and, you know, work like heck to make it um, beautiful mm -hmm. or ugly is, you know, whatever the directors and the other people who are, you know, want to, uh, sorry, their vision, mm -hmm. realize. So, yeah, I'm thrilled to be nominated, and I hope to be nominated again if... Get yeah. the better work, right? Yeah, right. Well, keep it going. So with your, with your work creatively, um, Ali, what's it like being on set with Cardinal now that you have an award? Are you going to be treated differently? Uh, I hope so. Yeah. 
because I'm a star now. I went from being an award-nominated actress yesterday to an award-winning actress. Oh, boy. Thank you. Already. Thank already. You, you really should have just bought it. Here. Take her out of here. You're not Canadian anymore. <laughs> What, uh, let me ask you this, Allie. What's the uh, credit on your IMDb that you're most proud of? Okay. Hmm. <laughs> okay, Cardinal, Cardinal was pretty spectacular because I've done a lot of, like, comedy and horror movies, like Running Through the Woods, Covered in Blood, Screaming. Yeah, and that wasn't even filmed. <laughs> yeah. Cardinal was, like, a really beautiful drama, like, this beautiful, dark, uh, mesmerizing piece of art, and I'm really, really proud of it. Um, I, okay, there's a pilot that I did <laughs> that I'm super proud of that no one has ever heard about or seen, so I think I'm going to have to say this. It was this pilot called Cinnamon Girl. And I flew to L.A. to test for it after I sent in my tape. And I was, like, young and super doe-eyed and excited. and Unlike now. (laughs) Super grisly. I know. I'm jaded now. Um, And I get to this audition, and, like, Renee Zellweger is like, you're amazing. Like, and, oh, dude. (laughs) So she basically cast me. Yeah, Renee. Yeah, we're buds. So she basically cast me to play, like, kind of a fictionalized young version of herself. <laughs> like, oh my God. Do you, Okay, this is why I'm glad I brought you it up. You are my idol. <laughs> Rocky, I hope you always have those kind of reactions. I hope, like, ten years from now, you're not like, I speak to Renee all the time. It's become a bore. <laughs> like, it's fantastic. Like, I love her, and she was just, like, so nice and warm and just the sweetest woman. And, like, just going through that whole experience was so incredible. And I was... It, I think it was my... First time being number one on, or no, maybe that was stage fright. Anyway, I was a star. And um, yeah, we shot this amazing pilot. Like, and everyone was saying it was going to get picked up, it was going to get picked up. And then it didn't. And I was so, so, so sad. Um, but how do, you, how do you deal with those kind of disappointments? Because there are a few in our industry. Oh, there's many. Like as there's in more, hour to there's, hour, there's disappointments. There's many, many disappointments. Yeah. Yeah. It's mostly disappointment. So how do you yes. deal with that? How do you get through the disappointments to keep on going? Uh, on? You drink. Right. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> um, it, t- it takes a lot of work, mm-hmm. a lot of hard work and, and dedication to the idea that you are valid and worthy and someone saying no to you is just you know, you might not be right for something or they might have some, like there's a, a hundreds of thousands of other reasons that you might not get chosen to work on a project mm. and you just have to keep going and believe that you're doing what's right. Joyce, did you have a lot of uh, no's before you started directing your own work or were you just like, I'm just going to do my own thing? Yeah, I think from the, the very beginning... I wasn't like I'm. I'm a bit new to this um, this whole thing, and so (laughs) so I I just didn't. I didn't know that um, it was that hard to make a feature film. So I kind of just jumped into it, going, "Okay, yeah, like I I have this idea. I really want to make it. Um, There's this cast that I really want to be in it, and so yeah, I'll just do it, right? So it's kind of like the ignorance um, kind of propelled me, yeah, and and like every step of the way. It was like, oh, it's it's probably not supposed to be this hard. I, I must be doing something wrong, so I'll just keep on going, you know. Yeah. And so, <laughs> I've heard that sometimes that's good though. If you don't know what's in front of you, you don't get scared. scared exactly. Of, the yeah. ignorance. Yes. I mean, you heard it here first. Um, did you find that, Sarah? I, yeah. Well, making I uh, produced and acted in a bunch of short films, and when I I took on doing a feature, I was like, well, it's the same as a short film, just like on a bigger scale. It'll be you know seven times longer than the last short film I made, but all the same principles apply. No. <laughs> it's so much harder. Why is it harder? What's the difference between... You're, it's just a lot more expensive, and then you're like, where is this money going to come from? I don't know. <laughs> Me, I guess. Uh, and, That's uh, so stressful. Y- yes, it, it was stressful, but I mean, I, I had collaborated with um, my best friend, Adam Garner-Jones, who 
directed it, who I co-wrote it with. Uh, we'd been collaborating for years and years, so um, I felt really confident making something with him. And we went through production with our own money, and then we ran out of money when it came time to go to post. And then we had the experience of applying to Telefilm for mm-hmm. completion funding, and that was at a whole other level that I had. Writing a grant, there should be awards just for writing grants. Well, it's not even a grant though; like it's it's uh, it's equity funding. So I don't know what equity funding no. is, so I had to like no, figure out all this my financial stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, so when you had no money, yeah. you had to sort of take. And I, I mean, I think we're all probably impatient people because we want to get to things now. So you had to take a break from your production. And uh, yeah, we had to. Well, we always in the back of our mind, we were like, yeah, yeah, we'll get a rough cut, show that to Telefilm, and they'll say yes, and it'll just be so easy. Uh, but no, it's not just that easy. You yeah. have to prove that you have something worthwhile for yeah. them to give you money, and uh, so that took some time. But yeah, just the whole like paperwork application process. I'm still just last night I literally finished I have submitted my final deliverables to Telefilm that were due like almost a year ago oh my gosh. <laughs> so bad. yeah but yeah it just takes forever I'm the only one doing it so yeah it's Rocky did work. you find that with your web series did you have a lot of like pre-funding planning Pre-funding planning. Oh, that's when you, before you start, you <laughs> fu- where you're going to get the money I, from. She used her serving so, tips. So, yeah, that's, I, there was a point where I was like, okay, I'm working at this serving job, collecting all these tips and money and blah, blah, blah. Like, what am I doing? Just going out and eating and going to karaoke. <laughs> like, yeah. I should maybe. Which has this, its value. Don't yes, any karaoke yes. fans here. Yeah, but, you know, I wanted to make stuff, and, and I wasn't going out on a ton of auditions. I was sort of new as an actor, and I was doing a lot of live comedy, and I was like, ugh, my, my aunt can't come from Mississauga to see my show at 9 o'clock on a Thursday because it's too long of a ride back, so I want to just make something so I can send her the video, and she can watch it and be like, ha-ha, my cousin, my, you know, uh, niece. niece. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I just started to put away money for that. We ran out of money. It was Perfect timing. I ran out of money uh, for post at the same time, around winter time when it gets really slow in the serving industry, um, uh, to do post. And that's when someone from CBC saw me at a show perform, which was crazy. And uh, Twitter messaged me and was like, loved your stuff. Do you want to write for us or do some videos? And I was like, not going to write for you. Got videos. Let's do this. Nice. Nice, nice. And so then that gave you the extra kick, huh? That gave me... (laughs) the ability to finish the project and yeah. make three more. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, how about you, Friday? When your, your world is different, as you said, because people, you sort of follow into a team. But where, well, I was just thinking this when they're talking about how they're raising money. Mm-hmm. I'm one of the people that spends yeah. money. Yeah, yeah. I was right? thinking the same thing. You know, and it's like, you know, I'm the evil one. But, um, so you're the one going, going, I need a little bit more money. That's right. Yeah. Or I have to scrounge. And, you know, and, and I have done independent. I mean, I'm, I've been in this industry for a long time, and in the early days I would do um, sort of producing and um, ADing on these half-hour shorts. People much like yourself would come to somebody like me and say, can you put a crew together? Can you do this? Can you do this? And I said, yes. And then I'd have to find the, the crew to do it and half the time say, this is what your job is, and this is how you do it. This is how you design something for the show. Um, and yeah, finding that money. I mean, I know what the struggle is. It's your, it's amazing that um, that uh, I have to say this though that I stopped doing that because I needed to make money <laughs> finally, eventually. And now I'm in a I'm in a union, unionized environment now, mm-hmm. and I'm in a um, a place where I want to work on the bigger shows. I want to you know be part of all that glitz and glamour, and I want to I want to work on the shows where I can spend a lot of money to make. Uh, great looking films um, so when you guys are finding yourself creating uh, how do you get through those roadblocks not financially but how do you get through creative roadblocks or um, like emotional roadblocks how do you guys deal that Sarah maybe you can start sure um, I try to remind myself of the joy that I find in um, in being on set and <clears throat> especially like my great love is acting and even if I, I go to an audition and I don't get cast, I still love being in the room and the chance to, you know, perform for like two minutes. Uh, I really, really love, so that's what I remind myself when I'm at home by myself submitting deliverables to Telefilm mm-hmm. <laughs> a year late. I'm like, why am I doing this? Oh, right, because I had the best time making this movie and being on set. And um, 
uh, yes, and I, I think that's like what you were saying. You can't look for um, uh, uh, approval from other people. You have to find it in yourself, and that's uh, what I try to do as well. Just I mean, that's great on paper, joy. but it is hard. It, like, it is, yeah. No, there are days to, where like, you're just like, I'm just going to quit today. Just for 24 hours. Well, Tomorrow I'll start again, but 24 hours. I just want to yeah, yeah. Sometimes you need a break. I'm going on a very short vacation next week. I've not gone on vacation in like a year and a half. What about you, Rocky? How do you get through roadblocks when you, um, like, because you do a lot of live performing too? Yeah, you know, it sucks. Um, I don't know what else to say. Sometimes you do a show and you come out of it and you just feel gross and you don't know why. And what I've started to do, and sometimes in auditions too, is I have a note. I have a notebook, and um, also I find with acting, like you can prepare so much, or you put a, lo- a lot of time or effort into a specific audition, say that is meaningful for you, and then it's over in literally a minute, like, and it just feels like it, it never happened. Like it was just whoop, and then okay, bye. You're <laughs> on the TTC home, and um, with all your makeup on, yeah. <laughs> you know, and dress yeah. so well, and um, <laughs> so I I try. I keep a notebook now where I write down. Um, how the process went, what I did that time, how I felt in the room, and how I feel after. And I feel just like acknowledging this information or this feeling really helps me move forward and feel like it's a process and that I'm, I'm working in a process of my life and career <laughs> versus, um, you know, versus today sucks. But also, I do eat a lot of um, Ed's Real Scoop in the East End. Sure. Which, after auditions. That's, that's a surefire way of getting through roadblocks, for yes. sure. Ice cream. But how, so those days when you need to pick yourself up, Allie, like you turn to your friends and things like that, is that... Yeah. And are you creating your own stuff as well, like these the other folks? Um, I actually... I, I do music. Yeah, because yeah, you I were in Score music. the Musical. Yeah. I, I was in this amazing movie called Score, yeah. a hockey musical. This is my first feature film. Thank yeah. you. Uh, quiet down. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, I actually do music. Um, so, so for me, like I love acting. I love my job. Like it's the best, most fun, like easiest most of the time. Cardinal was not easy um, job ever. But um, my music, it, like I do, I'm like a singer songwriter. I write sad songs. Uh, <laughs> It's a very separate thing for me that I'm very passionate about, and acting is more like my career, mm-hmm. my job. I love yeah. my job, but then my music is like my little secret thing yeah. like on the side. Joyce, do you find that with your directing stuff? Because I feel like Wexford Plaza was really personal for you. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I feel like my outlet is, um, is just physical activity, because what we do is so cerebral. Yeah. And... Um, the opportunities and the successes, um, they're not directly measured by the amount of effort that you, you put, as we all know. Yeah. And so I also do weightlifting. Come and on. So do you really? Yeah, yeah it's, that. it's very, um, you know, the amount of days that you work out, the amount of, um, you know, 60% of the weights that you, you lift um, just attribute directly to, like, how much you can lift in the future so just having something so measurable like yeah. roots you in the the physical world and you know it's it sort of makes sense for our world too like the amount of what you lift now will give you strength for the future so if you work on your careers now sure. see what i That's did there really a little deep. bit of connection That's with so your deep. weightlifting mm-hmm. uh we'd like to see some push-ups is what i'm saying <laughs> Uh, so, and when you were writing Wexford, Fly- uh, Wexford Files, Wexford Plaza, <laughs> was that part of your your upbringing? That's like that strip mall quality. Yeah, yeah, it was. Um, it, it was very personal. Um, the The idea came from this nostalgia I had for the strip malls that I grew up in, and that are now getting torn down mm-hmm. and changed into big box stores or condos. And so, um, so I, don't know, I was driving to my grandma's house, um, like, like a, five years ago, I guess, six years ago um, now. And um, I remember seeing that all these these strip malls were going away, and I was like, oh, like, oh, like I, I need to do something about it. But it's not like I'm like a, a policy person at the Toronto Heritage <laughs> Minister's <laughs> office, or uh, it's a fake, fake title, but. Um, <laughs> Probably not. Yeah. It probably does exist. So I was like, oh, I guess I, I could make a film about this. And so 
that's where the the core of the idea first started. This nostalgia I had mm-hmm. for these these strip malls. The thing that rec- I recognized um, last night in the uh, CSA Awards was the representation of women. Like there was one category, I think it was directors, that was majority women. Have you seen like a drastic change in the little, last little while, Friday? Oh yeah. Well, I, I think I've mentioned it before that um, well, Holly Dale won last night, yeah. and I worked with her on Mary Kills People, which she won for, and I loved that experience. <laughs> I don't, you know, that that was such a f- female empowering show. I mean, all the, you know, the above the line and the below the line, tons of women. Um, and, uh, um, and, and with an E, they, I think they specifically, I don't know if they specifically went to, they never said that, but I think every director save one was female. And, um, and I just found that incredible. I thought that was, a, and almost all the producers are, mm-hmm. are, are female. Um, now, uh, I hope moving forward that there's more of this and uh, I, the diversity is, is ever-changing in yeah. this industry, right? Yeah, I feel like uh, maybe five years ago, I was, every time I'd speak to women who were actors, I'd be like, it's our job to write and direct. It's our job to put that out. And it's so fantastic to see this panel and see the representation of people moving forward. Do you guys feel, do you ever feel like a woman on set? Do you ever feel like a woman in, the, in a writer's room? We, so I had a female um, cinematographer, and, um, and our lead is female, and um, my producer is male, and our production designer is a the guy, Adam Belanger. And so, uh, so I was talking about like lens choices and, you know, um, and cameras with Maya while I was talking about, you know, what earrings my lead actress should wear with this, like, male production designer mm-hmm. and, um, and you know talking to my producer about what kind of like food we should eat you right. know? so it was like kind of like a bit of a, a different kind of dynamic with what is traditionally known as kind of like feminine like tasks yeah. versus kind of masculine kind of tasks but I definitely do feel like when, when you work with a predominantly um, like a group of creative people that are probably female versus male. Like when you when you work with guys, you kind of go into the room and then you immediately you kind of have to like establish the hierarchy. You know, you like you, there's like this like invisible hierarchy. All these guys are trying to like clamor up, <laughs> uh, so you kind of have to like you know uh, fit into that. But with with women, um, the the experiences I have, um, you you go into a room and everyone's trying to figure out how they can contribute mm. rather than trying to like climb up this yardstick. It's yeah. like you know. So, um, so yeah, so I, I, I definitely feel the dynamic is different. Yeah. I work with a lot of technicians who, uh, um, and there are still huge barriers. I just want to talk a little more mm-hmm. negatively, but there are huge barriers in the technical world. I mean, you're talking about some great women DOPs, and I've met a few and all that stuff. Um, we have uh, many roles in, in set decoration, to be specific, and, and all the others. And there are great... Um, uh, They've made great headway, but there there are still areas in film that you know women just don't approach. Mm-hmm. You know, and and I really encourage them to, to to do it. Like in our audience, we have a boom op that's a woman and a props builder that's a, a woman, and and you know these women taking these roles and doing these jobs is really important. Um, and so you know these these roles that aren't you know producing and directing and all that stuff. Yes, you guys hiring these mm-hmm. women to do these jobs is still really important to do that, that kind of uh, positive hiring policy. Yeah, there's a responsibility yeah, exactly. to, uh, to the next generation of creators. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny because sometimes I'll find, technically, if I'm producing <clears throat> a live show and my partner Matt Barham's there, they'll directly, the tech people will directly talk to him yeah. as opposed yeah. to me. And I'm like, this is also my show. In fact, I had a guest once and they weren't even in charge of the show and the tech person still talked to them. And I was like, no, I have the information <laughs> oh, that you need. There's yeah. so many weird yeah. little moments. But that's moments changing, like right? That. That's also going, just, just to make you aware, you know, and as creators, do you find yourself instinctually writing for women and creating for women or do you find that it's a, there's a balance? Uh, I mean, I'm <laughs> right now. I'm mostly writing for myself, uh, yeah. so I'm writing for women, which is um, great. I mean, sometimes yeah. I find myself writing, and I go, "Wait a second, that role could be a woman," and I still have to flip my brain. Oh, well, for me, I find the challenging thing is because I'm so 
programmed, I feel, to uh, write a story. If it's about a woman, then there has to be a love interest, a male love interest. And, and that's what I'm trying to de program mm -hmm. myself from from um, immediately going to as a, as a storyline. Like what happens if it's a female love interest? Is yeah, that, female love interest. Yeah. Or just it doesn't have to be Or a love no interest. love interest, yeah, right? Yeah. Like, I have a dog. Uh, yeah, what about you gals down there writing-wise? I just think that um, just having women write the stories um, helps kind of push away this idea that women are objects of arousal in cinema, which is kind of what the canon has had for, you know, for the last, you know, how many years because of um, just that very, very kind of aggressive male gaze. And so I think it's just instinctual for female creators to not, you know, not do that because we don't really see ourselves as, you know, objects of, you know, arousal when we, you know, see ourselves in the world, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think, um, I think a lot of it is, is, is instinctual. Yeah. Rocky? Yeah, I, I completely agree. We uh, wrote five more uh, episodes for The Note to Self, which are coming out in a month or so. And when I pitched the ideas, um, and I pitched nine ideas, and they chose five. And I didn't realize... Who's, who's they? Like CBC? CBC, sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> and it, I didn't realize until um, I was writing out the thing and I was thinking about who to cast, that they were all women. I had written every single role as a woman. We paid all cast women. Yeah. And I was like, huh, I didn't even do that on purpose. I didn't do that on purpose at all. It was just where I was at, the ideas that I had. I think of the nine ideas, eight of them were all female-driven, uh, and none of them are about love interests. And I was just realizing that when we were talking about it. But I think that that's just from taking from your own experience exactly what you said. Like, you don't see yourself, in, however you see yourself, and what you feel um, like writing about is what you'll write about. So I really, I really want to thank all of you at oh, this thank panel. You. Thank you so much. Thank you.